This is the Review Channel, and in this video, we'll take a look at the ceramic version of the famous New York City Greek coffee cup. This cup features a long history in New York City, starting with the waves of Greek immigrants arriving in the 1920s escaping the Greco-Turkish War, and then again in the 1940s to escape from World War II. Like all of New York's immigrants, they brought over their culture and culinary delights, which included their love of coffee, which led to many of the Greek-owned diners and coffee pushcarts. In 1963, the Sherry Cup Company wanted to produce a to-go cup to sell to the Greek vendors. One of their salesmen, Leslie Buck, was tasked with selling cups to the Greek vendors and with no design background, created the design specifically to appeal to the vendors, which led to being one of the most famous cups in New York City history. The cup is called Anthora, which is a play on words for amphora, which is a Greek ceramic container for holding oil, wine, milk, and other liquids. Two amphora containers with intricate designs are featured on the Anthora cup. The overall design is framed with a meander design, which is a type of Greek key design with interlocking geometric shapes. The meander sprawls along the top and bottom of the cup. The blue and white color motif is inspired by the Greek flag, as well as angular typeface resembling ancient Greek lettering. Three mustard yellow coffee cups are shown with steam, indicating a fresh cup of coffee under the words, we are happy to serve you reflecting the quality of service from these establishments. Leslie's design was a success, becoming synonymous with Greek diners and other establishments. At the height of the cup's popularity, there were more than 500 million sold in the mid-90s, though the cup has now fallen from usage due to the rise of Starbucks and other popular chain establishments with their own branded cups. The Anthora Cup can still be spotted around New York City to this day, and you can get them from some bodegas, delis, or small coffee shops. You may not have noticed, but this coffee cup has been in every piece of media depicting life in New York City, ranging from law and order detectives to marketing executives and madmen. To this day, you still may be able to get your hands on one of these Anthora cups or one of its many knockoff versions that exist. They're the perfect pairing of classic New York City aesthetic filled with bitter day-old coffee and served with a large stack of the thinnest napkins you've ever used in your life. I purchased a porcelain recreation of the famous cup from Amazon, since the paper versions seem to be harder and harder to find around the city, and I wanted something to last beyond a single usage. The porcelain version has a slightly off-white color with a gloss glaze, while the printing of the design has a matte texture to it. The color of the print seems to be slightly faded and printed unevenly on the cup. You can see the warping of the meander on the top of the cup, giving an imperfection to the way the design wraps around the cup, dipping up and down. The porcelain cup has an indentation on the side where the design overlaps with itself to give a similar texture and feel to the paper version with its indentation from the manufacturing process of the paper cup. This added imperfection actually adds an aesthetic quality to the cup matching the paper version. Though this porcelain cup has no fitted top available for travel, it still makes a nice at-home coffee cup with callbacks to the original paper versions. The product page for the porcelain version of the Anthora cup describes the cup as being three and three quarter inches high by three and a quarter inches wide. Measuring myself, I was surprised to find that the cup was in fact larger than advertised. The cup is actually four inches high, with a width of three and a half inches at the mouth of the cup and a width of two and a half inches at the bottom. In the spirit of keeping these Amazon sellers honest, I decided to test out the other measurements as well. The listed weight is 0.62 pounds, or 281.2 grams. My version of the cup weighed in at 0.5 pounds. While being larger than advertised, the cup is in fact lighter. The cup is listed as being certified lead-free and up to standard on California's Proposition 65, also known as the Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986, which requires any chemicals known to the state of California, known to cause cancer or reproductive toxicity, to be disclosed to the public. Since I have no way of testing this, I'll take the sellers at their word, but I will update the video description if I receive any lead poisoning, cancer, or reproductive issues after using this cup. Since the cup's primary function is to hold liquid, I moved on to testing the capacity of the cup. The listed capacity is 10 fluid ounces. I filled the cup with water and then transferred the water into a measuring cup. Since the maximum measuring capacity of the measuring cup is 8 ounces, it was hard to verify that it was exactly 10 fluid ounces, but since the measuring cup was filled almost to the top with plenty extra spilled over on the table, this seemed fairly accurate. 
One common issue I saw in the reviews for this cup reference how hot the walls of the cup get when filled with coffee. Typically, coffee cups should be thick enough to insulate and keep the coffee warm for long periods of time, while being cooler to the touch for the end user when handling the cup. At room temperature, the cup had a temperature reading of about 76 degrees Fahrenheit, or 24.4 degrees Celsius. I poured the hot coffee into the cup, which had a temperature reading of 147.2 degrees Fahrenheit, or 64 degrees Celsius. Doing a reading of the cup right after pouring the coffee, it quickly rose to 126.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and then again to 131.7 degrees, or 52.5 degrees Celsius to 55.3 degrees Celsius, respectively. This is already fairly warm to start off with. After waiting a few minutes, I checked the temperature of the cup again, which rose to 137.4 degrees Fahrenheit, or 58.5 degrees Celsius. The coffee in the cup dropped in temperature to 140.1 degrees Fahrenheit, or 60 degrees Celsius. The cup and the coffee found a temperature equilibrium, and the outside of the cup was very hot to the touch. Attempting to pick up the cup in its current state would be the same as pouring hot coffee directly on my hand, which would make for a very uncomfortable experience. It would be best to pour the coffee in the cup and allow it to rest for several minutes before handling. I left the coffee cup to sit for about 12 minutes before it felt comfortable enough to pick up. The lack of insulation on this cup can be attributed to its thickness. While I had a difficult time getting the exact thickness of the walls of the cup with my calipers, you can see the top lip is about 8 millimeters thick, and you can estimate that the walls of the cup range from about 2 to 4 millimeters thick. Somewhere along the production process, they must have cut down on porcelain material to save cost, which makes sense when you factor in the weight discrepancy on the product page to the actual weight, since the product I received is 50 grams lighter than what is advertised. While the porcelain version of this cup may not be best suited for its original purpose of holding coffee, it offers other solutions, such as holding pens and household items in a decorative manner. To test the holding capacity of the cup, I filled it with some typical household items and found the cup was able to easily hold six pencils, nine pens, five markers, one highlighter, two mini size measuring sticks, and a pair of scissors, with plenty of room left over for extras such as loose change, keys, or other random household items. Now let's move on to the pros and cons. As a pro, this is a functional cup. It holds up to 10 ounces of liquid without leaking and can transport liquid if necessary. The porcelain version of the famous Anthora Greek cup makes a wonderful conversation piece, so you can always talk about how this cup is used as a prop that signals a movie or TV show that takes place in New York City between 1963 and the mid-2000s. In some instances, using this cup in public can be a viable replacement for a personality. As a con, the cup is unable to shield the end user from the heat of the coffee in the cup, causing an unpleasant coffee drinking experience. This would reduce the usage of the cup from an everyday driver to an occasionally used mug that will collect dust in your cupboard. There are some discrepancies between the product page and the actual product, since the cup is bigger than advertised while also being lighter with thinner cup walls. There's a good chance that this version from Amazon is a ripoff version, since the true version of the porcelain cup is sold by the Museum of Modern Art. The printing of the Anthora design is uneven and crooked, which gives a visibly poor quality look to the cup. There's no attachable lid available for this cup, which would complete the illusion of mimicking the real paper version, and it would add more versatility to the usage without the worry of spilling. Overall, I would rate this cup as an Epta out of Deca. Since the cup does not function well as a coffee cup, but it's saved by its callback to the Anthora paper cups, giving a nostalgic edge over porcelain coffee cups on the market. This is the Review Channel, and if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.